All right, here's what I'm gonna call step two on doing the JZX 100 Tour V conversion. Well, it's not even Tour V. So I'm adding uh, this. So I'm adding the serial nine diff bushing, so I can add the second bushing that's missing. That way I can go ahead and throw in the IS 300 rear differential and not have the whole rear end just flopping around. Let me show you guys. All right, so let's talk differentials. So the biggest difference between the Grande 2.5 and the Tour V is the axles and the differential, along with uh, an additional bushing from the right side of the axle. So basically, this bushing here goes here. And I'll insert our picture so you guys can see that. But you also need this welded ring from Serial 9. That welds to the subframe, and then the bushing goes inside here. But these axles are supposed to be stronger. Um, there's a better gear ratio in this differential. And it also has an LSD, which makes that the biggest plus for me. I was a little apprehensive about switching it over because I thought it was going to be pretty expensive to do all that. But then it only cost me, for the diff, it was $180 with the diff and the two axles and the stub shafts. Serial 9 bushing ring cost $50. Actually, it was less than that because uh, we bought it on Black Friday, and then that, uh, I don't remember the brand, but that was from Amazon. That's $15. You're getting the diff from the junkyard. Make sure to grab the nuts and for the axles. That's something you'll probably need. And then you'll need the bolts that go from the front of the diff to the actual car itself. All right, so next on the list of things to do is we're gonna be putting an IS300 rear differential on the car. Um, I have some video clips of me talking about it before, but I'm just gonna talk about it again. We're gonna be adding the excessive rear subframe bushings. I already put the passenger side on just to see. Um, I'll show you guys when I'm all done. I'm really out of breath. Uh, but yeah, I wanna show you guys the carnage of taking this out uh, after I get this installed. I really wanna get this in first. All right, so this is what it looks like when you cut out the diff bushing. You got a saw down the middle to loosen the tension. That way you can get the bushing out. And then I just kind of hammered, hammered it right here. And then after that, just tapped all the way around, came right out. Pretty damn easy, if you ask me. All right, got my 32 millimeter axle socket. Just gonna snug this up real quick so that way the axle can sit all the way up against the brake hub. All right, so yesterday I climbed out of the car like four or five times. Now I just wanna make sure I have everything that I need when I go under here. So now we just gotta get that bolted up to the front. I wanna try to get the drive shaft on so I don't have to drop the center drive shaft too hook it up because it was a little bit of a tight fit yesterday yeah let's get this on all right so i'm just buttoning up the diff don't mind all the rest um it went in pretty smoothly but see when i first put the diff up and bolted the two front bolts over here there's an adjustment play back and forth so i wasn't able to get this all the way down so a quick tip for anybody who wants to try to readjust this took my pry bar, shoved it in here, pushed this all the way forward so it moved the diff forward. And then now I'm going to take a washer. That doesn't work. All right, so now after that, you can go ahead and crank this in and it's gonna pull the uh, bushing into the ring. All right, there it is, diff bushings are all in. All this is gonna come back out later on once I do uh, subframe reinforcement. But what I did is I added this ring, don't mind my welding. Uh, and then these two subframe bushings. It is pushed all the way forward. The diff is pushed all the way forward, so I don't wanna hear any comments about pushing my diff forward. I just did it. And then, uh, yeah, let's go check out this LSD. Let's get everything buttoned back up. All right, so I'm gonna take the JZX for its first drive with the new LSD. Let's see how it goes. Um, just wanna say it wasn't that hard to install, obviously, it's just putting in a diff, but uh, when you have a rusty JDM car, it takes forever 
my recommendation to anybody doing any work on a freshly imported JDM car or anything, spray it down with PB Blaster or some kind of um, rust penetrant to get it all loose. So in the Corolla world, we have this item called unobtainium. That means something that's very hard to find, rare. These, to find these on the market are pretty rare. All right, so another part of the conversion for the JZX uh, 100, going from the non-turbo to turbo model is the handbrake. On a non-turbo, they have a foot brake. So what you want to do, if you're going to be drifting the car, obviously, you're going to want to switch over to the handbrake setup. So here's the handbrake setup that I was able to purchase from jzxparts.au. This is the factory armrest. Actually, it's really cool. It's not that, it does all this, right? But there's no provision for the handbrake. I looked at it, I wanted to keep this, seeing if I can cut it up, but it doesn't make any sense. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this guy right here. I was able to purchase this and it came within a couple weeks. Considering it came from Russia or some other part of the world, it got here pretty fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. As you can see, I already re removed this out of the car. All right, so this escalated kind of quickly. I went to go just uh, mock up my handbrake to see how everything went. I ended up under the car and bolting stuff. Now I'm under the dash, taking stuff apart. This is all for the handbrake, guys. So when you do a five-speed conversion on this type of car, the brake pedal, the handbrake or foot brake pedal, emergency brake pedal, is in the way of the clutch. So you gotta take all that out. So now you gotta take all this out to get this out. And a lot of removing of stuff. So give me a sec. I'll be back and kind of go over what I just did. All right, now that I got that vent tube out of the way, you guys can see what I'm working with. So this foot brake pedal here is in the way of where your clutch pedal is going to go. And it actually connects to the same bolts as your clutch pedal. And so another thing, I'm sorry about the lighting, it's just the way things are. So this is a Tour V handbrake, like I showed you guys earlier in the video. It mounts to the side of the tunnel. So we're going to have to actually take the seat out and drill these out. This is the factory non-turbo e-brake cable that goes here. So imagine I had to go under the car right where this sits and disconnect this. You got the drive shaft and the exhaust in, in the way. So that took me a while to do because I didn't want to take the drive, drive shaft out. But yeah, so the seat's gonna have to come out so I can get to these guys right here. But first, I wanted to take care of this because this is 100% in the way of where the clutch pedal is going to go. So yeah, give me a second while I figure out how to take all this shit out. All right, so let's down some hidden bolts under here. All right, so I'm going to see if I can do this the easier way by pulling this out, which I don't think that's actually going to happen. All right, so a quick little tip for anybody pulling this cable out. I'll try to pull it the other way. Pull it, pull it this way outwards that way makes life a whole lot easier so there's a foot brake assembly and this cable and I'll show you what we're gonna do next so one of the things we're gonna have to do is we're gonna extend this cable to go to here that tells the dummy light on the dashboard that uh, your e-brakes up or not up well yeah let you know if the e-brakes on so we're gonna do that on a later time gonna order some wire actually I have wire um hmm. fuck maybe I'll do that in a bit I want to get these holes drilled out first so I gotta take the seat out All right, so I got the seat out enough so I can get to these holes that mount to there so we're gonna drill that out I'll show you guys the what I got to after many minutes later all right so I got the e-brake in all the way it's all nice and stable and what I had to do is, uh, this is the e-brake um, sensor from the Tour V. And then we're just running this wire all the way up here to the factory. This goes to your gauge cluster. It tells you that the brake is on. All right, so we got the new center console in with the e-brake. I'm going to replace this. Um, this is going to get changed. And then I don't know what to do with the rest of the interior right now. Um, eventually, I'm going to either have to black it out or 
paint that center gray to match the rest of it. But yeah, um, let me put everything back together and we'll go take a rip uh, around the block to see if the e-brake pulls and holds and locks. All right, so we got the Tour View Center console in with the e-brake and it works. I know that it looks kind of ghetto, but it is a one necessary step. It puts me one step closer to doing the R154 five-speed conversion along with the one Jay-Z GTE conversion. Uh, I left this here for now because I thought it looked kind of stupid without it there. Maybe once that's gone, I'll put a turbo timer or something over there. Oh yeah, pretty stoked. Got a handbrake now. And the funnier thing is that it locks pretty good. It locks really good. So, um, I don't know if I'm gonna paint this or what I'm gonna do yet, but I do wanna get a new shift boot, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, but yeah, I'll set up no more foot brake. Soon to be a clutch brake.